So I hope you guys have had a lovely Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Uh, if I get this out before or afterwards, <laughs> fingers crossed. Now, what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be looking at the rig that I've been using to either shoot my YouTube videos or my clients' testimonials um, or any interviews that I've been doing for customers. Now, one of the things that was really apparent to me was that when I was going to scope out the venue for which the testimonial or interview was taking place, I was always shocked at how much little foot space you actually had to do the interview. Now, it could be that you were doing it in as small as a coffee room, whereby there's just a table, enough room for me and the client for us to do the interview and a room for the camera. Now, you can work with natural light and get away with it and not have to worry about fetching additional lighting. Obviously, there's gonna be benefit for consistent lighting, but if there's not enough room, then you're just gonna to have to forego fetching lighting or at least using it. But what I didn't wanna do was compromise on the rest of the quality. So I wanted to make sure I had good sound. I wanted to make sure that I had enough options in the edit so that I can make the actual testimonial or video compelling. The other issue that was always worrying me is like what we're doing now. We are, this is the gear that I would normally use to shoot my YouTube or my client work. But for today's purposes, we are just shooting it on a single camera. If anything goes wrong with that, say for instance, I put this into the PC and the SD card craps out and it corrupts and for some reason I just lose that footage. It's gone. Now if I do that with a client, it's not very good for my reputation and it's gonna be very frustrating for the customer as well or the client because then in order to mitigate that or to make good on your word you're gonna have to ask can you do it again but you will do it for free no cost incurred to the reshoot or anything like that as good faith because the fault was on your side so you want to do as much as you can to mitigate that and the way that i've done it is with two cameras and multiple sources of audio now for today or for what i've been doing is is that i've got two cameras, I got the G5, uh, the GH5, sorry, and the G7. So that provides a fantastic option for editing whereby I can use cutaways or if the person is stumbling with their words, I can get them to re-say the lines and cut to a second angle. And because it's all on the compact camera or the compact stand, sorry, I can do this. I don't have to worry about it being on multiple stands just to get the same effect, I've got it here because it's all on a 40 centimeter Arca Swiss plate bar that just goes right across the center. So I can mount the two cameras on it perfectly. The other benefit of doing that is redundancy. So like I just said now with the G7, it only has one SD card. So if anything craps out, I mean, well, I'm pretty much up shit creek without a paddle. But the GH5 has dual slot recording. So I can record a backup in the GH5. So that is one layer. Because I've got the second camera, now that's another G7, so that's only another car that's been recorded to, then that is a second backup. Which means I've got two backups on the go if I need to. So should anything happen with one of the cards in here, that's fine, I've got a backup. Should the hand of God come down and decide he's going to mess with me on that day and completely trash this camera and everything in it and give me the middle finger, then I've got the second camera. So fingers crossed, I've got enough redundancy to make sure that when I get to the edit that nothing's going to go wrong. Because it might be something as stupid as you miss a little bit of focus with this and it's a little bit soft, but that one is spot on you've got another backup. It's not just about having the single best camera. You need to make sure you've got redundancy. And I hope I'm trying to slam this home because you don't want to get to that PC and be, the next thing you need to do is go to the shop and buy some diapers because when you call that customer, you're pretty much going to fill them. So that's what you want to do. 
Now for audio, now I always like to make sure that I've got redundancy with audio. So like this, we've got the shotgun microphone. We've got the lavalier. Now the other shotgun microphone is on that camera, but this is going to be put on the camera. I and mean, one of the things I'm going to be doing is putting rod, not the person, but a rod on here so that it sits out further so that I can get that microphone closer to the customer. So the reason for that is like I said before, if the shotgun craps out, I can use the lavalier. If the lavalier craps out, then I can go back to the scratch audio that's recorded into the customer. The H6 has the option for a line out. So what I tend to do is that I tend to have a small mini recorder that comes out and it goes into that. And then that way then I've got a backup. Now the other way you can do it is that you can not put a um, shotgun microphone on one of the cameras and you can put the line out into the second camera so you have a backup here so this camera could be the backup for the second angle your video file and your good audio from the shotgun like i said should anything go wrong because there have been instances where people have taken the sd card out or it is corrupted when they've pressed stop and you don't want to do that at least it's been captured on the camera so there's that now the actual system itself is on a Manfrotto 055 tripod and this is on a dolly. So I can literally move this whatever I want. So even though it's fixed right now, I can move this about. I can take this into the office and record from there, which would be perfect. It also means then that this backbone, and this is what um, is holding the shotgun mic, that is two 18 inch rods and they are being fixed together with rod clamps so the top microphone is being held on by a an extension arm that can extend further out but we're using it to record myself today so we're not going to do that but that will come out about here it will so i can get nice and close to the customer again this is then on a tripod head which allows me to pivot so get that back so I can position that where I want so I got flexibility and because it's on a fixed plate it's sturdy as well and this tripod uh, head is sturdy enough to support the weight the second option then well not the second option is the the actual Desview monitor now I've only got one monitor to keep everything um, nice and compact and in here is a switcher now this allows this goes from the output into the monitor and then the two cameras use the hdmi to feed into here and i can just switch so i don't need two monitors i can plug in three cameras to this and switch between them to make sure that exposure and um, focus and everything like that is spot on and then again that is being clamped by the well it's by the clamp rod but in there how this is being clamped together there are two little mini clamps now these were counterweights that i bought for i think it was the zion or whatever you bloody say it for the mobile phone uh, gimbal and you put these clamps on the side of the arm to help counterweight the actual phone I haven't been using them for a long time and it just so happens they came in perfect for clamping that together so that is what is doing that it keeps it nice and compact and it's out the way and obviously then we've got the h6 which is on the actual rail itself so everything is where i need it and because it's on the wheels i can ship it anywhere and that is it so no it's not it because i'll just show you so I'll take this off. So both cameras can come off easy. Everything packs down. Let's just put you there. Same with this, just so you can get a look at the rail a bit better. So there we are. So there's that rail. And then underneath here is how it's being clamped. So there are two super clamps. And each of those super clamp has a rail clamp 
and then all that's happening is that this feeds into that and it keeps it nice and sturdy and that is how the backbone of that system is working so if I am not doing the interview myself and someone is doing it I can flip this around because this is on an Arca Swiss plate as well turn this to me so it's not distracting the actual people who are being interviewed and I can slide that over and then it's just for me to to look at when I'm manning the camera and everything is sorted and again this is on a plate as well that can pop off but it's recording and this is a um, self-leveling head which I need to get for one of these with this side as well uh, but I just haven't done it yet so there are a few things that I need to to re-add when I do this but for the most part of it that is the the rig so we put this back on now I normally don't use this lens for interviews I use that lens but it's there now the other Brucey bonus for those of you who know who Bruce Forsyth is is that the GH5 is on a long plate and I think this is either 30 or 28 centimeters in length and the reason for that is that it goes on a fluid um, a tripod fluid head and it just allows me to position that camera so that I can counterbalance it but the benefit of that is that should the customer want a teleprompter then I can attach it to the actual uh, Arca Swiss plate because on the T3 by Desview I've got a quick release clamp here and this just slides on so then they've got the option then to have a teleprompter and it's all nice and neatly compact and that is it so fingers crossed you so fingers crossed you like this content if you do I'd really appreciate it if uh, you give me a thumbs up and hope you guys have a lovely new year and yeah fingers crossed 22 will be much better cheers <laughs>